the length relationship between the distal radius and ulna at the wrist is defined as the ulnar variance uh, that is very important when you are fixing the distal radius fracture you should remember that the ulnar variance should be negative preferably or neutral but it should be never positive ulnar variance so how do you measure this ulnar variance the simplest method is draw a line from the ulnar articular surface towards the radius second line from the ulnar aspect of the radial articular surface parallel to the first line this distance will give you the ulnar variance now the simplest and the most commonly used method is the hafner's technique here first line is drawn from the most proximal part of the ulnar metaphysis and second line is drawn from the most proximal most part of the radial metaphysis the distance between these two proximal most parts will give you the ulnar variance second variation is first line is drawn from the distal most part of the ulnar metaphysis and the other line is drawn from the distal most part of the radial metaphysis and this distance will give you the distal distal distance di di distance between the metaphy line drawn from the metaphysis of the ulna and the radius will give you the ulnar variance so these are the methods used to measure the ulnar variance commonly so this hafner's technique is a very important technique and it should be kept in mind when you are calculating the ulnar variance so now coming to the mechanism of injuries of the distal radius as well as ulna in case of ulna the most common cause of injury is uh, direct trauma or fall which will lead to a straight forward transverse or an oblique ulnar fracture or a comminuted ulnar fracture whereas in case of distal radius the most common cause of the fracture is fall on an outstretched hand so when you fall on an outstretched hand the position of the wrist is very important if the wrist is in extended position at the time of the loading stress then the volar surface will fail in tension the volar surface will fail in tension and the distal fragment will move dorsally leading to a dorsal displacement of the distal fragment conversely if axial loading is done on a flexed wrist this will produce a volarly displaced fragments with the apex dorsally angulated so two scenarios first is fall on an outstretched hand with first scenario wrist in extension tens will lead to tensile failure on the volar aspect and the distal fragment moves dorsally second scenario is wrist in flexion 